Aloha. Welcome to the Mr. G podcast. Today is the 4th of July. Happy 4th of July, 2023. This is episode number 45. Uh, we're going to be talking about the 4th of July. It's not very patriotic where I'm broadcasting from on the outskirts of Chinatown here in Honolulu, Hawaii, the largest city in the Pacific, my city. It's a hot, sultry, 79 degrees, about 7 a.m. here in the city of angels, Honolulu, Hawaii. Fuck you, Los Angeles. Today is the 4th of July. Uh, happy 4th of July, everybody. Um, I'd like to start by saying that all the street cats were fed and happy today. I brought tuna, canned ham, pate, and a bunch of dry food. I went and checked on the street kittens, and apparently the workers near there have found all of them homes. So things are really going great. I'm extremely grateful for all the donations I've received, especially the uh, the Venmo $200 donation last night. Thank you very much, Kay. I understand your uh, letter, your name, but uh, thank you for everybody who's donated on GoFundMe and uh, Venmo and everything like that. That seems like whenever it's low on cat food, uh, my viewers, my my community, it's small, but it's strong, comes through. And that's another reason why I do this podcast every day, because I love doing the podcast. And I'm also here every day making content, making music videos of me feeding the street cats every day and doing the podcast every day. And this podcast, the Mr. G podcast, the Mr. G Hawaii podcast, the Mr. G Hawaii Gregory Brandt podcast, if you can't find it, is available wherever you listen to podcasts. It's in the podcast club. Audacity podcast, Apple podcast is the best place. You can subscribe to me on Spotify podcasts. Amazon podcast, Google podcast, iHeartRadio podcast, and there's a few Mr. G podcasts, believe it or not. I am the only Mr. G, really, but uh, until I'm up there at the top of the Mr. G podcast list, until the other Mr. G podcast, until they give it up, uh, you can find full episodes uploaded in their entirety of the Mr. G podcast on Twitter and YouTube. And I do this just about every single day. I'm live streaming it right now on YouTube. Got a few haters on YouTube watching, huh? How's your guys' community going? Pretty good, huh? How's that toxicity? All right. The racist uh, YouTubers out there. Well, I won't ever forget you guys, how you got, you know, got me fired as a teacher and everything like that. <laughs> you guys always got a place in my uh, heart. I, I don't know. But, um, but yeah, so uh, today is the 4th of July. It seems like it's not, it's getting less important every year and less patriotic every year. Um, I, I wasn't alive for the 200th uh, centennial, the bicentennial of the 4th of July, which happened in 1976 because, you know, the United States, uh, you know, became a country in 1776. So the centennial was in 1876. The bicentennial, 200 years, was in 1976. I, I'm, I'm guessing the 300-year anniversary is called the tricentennial. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a guess. It's an educated guess. That's my hypothesis. Is that it's the tricentennial, and that's going to happen in the year uh, 2076. So I'm looking forward to that. You know, it's a, it's a little ways away. But really, 2050 is right around the corner. Uh, you know, 1996, do you guys remember, if you're old enough, you remember the Spice Girls or Hanson or the Wallflowers or the, the alternative band Bush? That was 1996. And 1996 was further away than 2050 is. You know, we're closer to 2050 than we are to 1996. So if you remember 1996 then 2050 is right around the corner, believe it or not. And with quantum computers uh, and AI, uh, it's going to be the uh, biggest inventions of uh, possibly humankind. But uh, we're not talking about AI today. We're not talking about quantum computers on this Tuesday, 4th of July, which is funny because some people have to go to work. Some people don't. It's a federal holiday. You know, I, uh, I feed a certain colony of cats every day, but then on weekends and holidays, I feed a couple other cats. And so today when I went and visited this particular cat, PK, 
She's like confused. She's like, is it a holiday? She's like, is it a three day weekend? Because yesterday was Monday because a lot of people went to work on Monday and they're off on Tuesday. And then some people, they uh, bosses gave them Monday off and then they have to come into work on Tuesday. So it's it's a it's a mixed bag of whether it's a holiday or not. I, I like I smelled somebody barbecuing and then, you know, I saw somebody going to work and then you know, I heard somebody playing music and then I, you know, like uh, saw uh, the, the delivery, the trash man. So whether it's a holiday or not is uh, up for argument. It is a holiday officially. It's the 4th of July, but it gets less and less significant every year. And today is even more so because it's a reminder how yesterday was not a holiday. Tomorrow is not a holiday. But here, Tuesday, 4th of July, supposedly holiday. Uh, it, 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 I like it, though. It's, I like it for the same reason I like Monday mornings, because it brings people back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. It brings people back to reality. That's why I love Monday mornings. It's like, hey, motherfucker, we're animals wearing clothes. You're going to work to nine to five and think you're special or something. And, you know, I'll, look at all the office workers. They're getting paid 20 30 40 dollars an hour a lot of them are morbidly obese they're surfing facebook all day and they're getting paid 20 30 dollars an hour i've had office jobs where i saw me and the co-workers doing nothing being paid extraordinary amounts of money and my conscience couldn't handle it i'm like no i'm going out i'm working for myself i'm doing something else i'm not gonna like surf the internet all day and and dress up in your nice casual work business casual clothes and act like you're important more way more important than you are i'm looking forward to ai i'm looking forward to people losing their jobs whoop where did it go i lost it well did i put it over there did i put it over there where did my job go i seem to have misplaced it i'm looking forward to that let people create art let people create music you know when you give people time where they don't have to jump in the rat wheel and roll around for 40, 50 years. You know, they, they can come up with inventions. That's where the Renaissance came from. That's where Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci came out of. People had more free time and they explored the arts. They explored the sciences. People aren't just going to stop inventing things because, you know, of, of UBI, you know, uh, and which is inevitable because you're going to have within the next 10, 15 years an entire workforce that's uh, that has no job and nothing to do. And not all of them are going to create podcasts like Mr. G. Not all of them are going to, you know, write uh, stellar books like Gonzo Education, you know. Uh, so they're going to need something to do. And a lot of them are going to start to explore the part of their mind that they haven't used, the part of the mind that, you know, public education doles down. You know, they're going to start using their creative side. They're going to have more time uh, to do things that they didn't even know that they were interested in. And so I'm looking forward to that. I've always been able to see a few steps ahead of humankind and human consciousness. And I always feel more evolved, especially on a on a on a uh, on a um, on a molecular level. So uh, anyways, 4th of July, I hope you guys are having a good one. I, I hope uh, you keep all your fireworks and your sparklers safe as can be, all right? And if you're going to your mommy, visit your mommy and daddy's one-bedroom apartment, make sure to <laughs> keep the sparkler safe so it doesn't burn down the building. So the 4th of July is a big day for fireworks, cookouts, and parades. This is from NPR, National Public Radio. There have been 27 different versions of the U.S. flag from 1977 to 1960. Oh, excuse me, from 1777 to 1960. So in the history of the United States, there's been 27 versions of the flag, 27 changes, and 25 of them were made only to the stars. Since 1818, the number of the stars on the flag, by law, must always reflect the number of states in the United States, with new states added on the flag on July 4th in the year following their admission. Oh, interesting. So that's another thing that you did not know about the 4th of July is it's also the day that the states get the star on the official flag of the United States. So there were no new uh, states admitted uh, in the past in, to, in the past year. Sorry, District of Columbia, maybe next year. 
Lo siento, Puerto Rico. No stay doing yet. <laughs> Lo siento, Puerto Rico. <laughs> because, uh, ¿por qué? Puerto Rico wants to become a state. Puerto Rico quieres uh, estoy un statehood. Uh, Puerto Rico wants to become a state and uh, Washington DC wants to uh, become a state as well. Uh, but in, in the, in the uh, left, the Democrats really want Washington DC and Puerto Rico to become a state because they think it will help them with votes. So uh, and th these are fun facts about the 4th of July. Number two, there are numerous celebrations of U.S. Independence Day abroad. Celebration of the United States Independence Day happens in Denmark, Norway, Ireland, Sydney, Australia. And in Denmark, the Rebuild Festival rings the festivities with picnic and music. All right, number three, the 4th of July is a big day for consumer spending. This year, Americans are expected to spend $9.5 billion on food alone. And in 2022, they spent $2.3 billion on fireworks. Hey, guys, instead of lighting fireworks one year, um, let's just feed all the cats. How about that? We'll just feed the street cats instead. Huh? Nope. <laughs> instead. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, meow. Hmm. Uh, that's a lot of money. Two point three billion on the United States spent on fireworks last year, and nine point five billion on food. It's just pr predictive programming. It's like today's Fourth of July. You must eat hot dogs and hamburgers, and then the hot dogs and hamburger company is like, "Yeah, Fourth of July. You're supposed to eat hot dogs and hamburgers, just like they show you on the television show. Haven't you seen the commercials? You eat hot dogs and hamburgers. You know, like." Why? What What if I don't want to eat hot dogs and hamburgers? What if I want lasagna? Lasagna? What if I want pizza? What do you think this is? The Super Bowl? <laughs> you know? Like, what the fuck? Like, don't tell me what to eat because it's the 4th of July. How did that become a thing? Hot dogs are horrible. What, processed meat? I have to eat processed meat on the 4th of July? They didn't have hot dogs in 1776, and they damn sure didn't have processed meat. What the fuck? You ever eat the, the the meat they sell now? It's crap. It's probably not even cow meat. It's probably rat meat. Don't tell me what to eat. I'll eat whatever the fuck I want to eat. Don't tell me what to eat on the 4th of July. Oh, it's the 4th of July. How many people are getting drunk today because it's the 4th of July? Oh, the powers that be, the 50 people that run the world, they're very happy about that. And Anheuser-Busch is also happy about that. The whole Bud Light contra controversy, all the beer makers are happy about that. They just want to keep beer on your mind because alcohol is a chemically addicting substance. It goes into the bloodstream. You know, you have withdrawals when coming off of it. It's horrible. And uh, they want to keep it on your mind because the people fighting alcoholism, you know, that's the thing. You, you put booze around them. That's the one thing to do when you want somebody to stop drinking. You eliminate it from around them. And having Bud Light in the news for whatever reason or beer in the news for whatever reason, it just reminds people that don't want that have problems with drinking uh, to drink. And personally, I don't have a problem with drinking. Never like the stuff. I, you know, I couldn't even chug a beer if I wanted to. But other people out there have lots of problems with it. All right. Number four, feelings of pride and patriotism in the U.S. are at an all time low. Big surprise. According to a 2022 Gallup poll, only 38 percent of Americans consider themselves extremely proud to be American. Still, according to uh, Retail Federation, 87 percent of Americans are planning to celebrate. Number five, fireworks uh, can significantly wor worsen air quality. Uh, as a battle of U.S. air quality issues, smoke and smoke from Canadian wildfires, there's concern about how some large fireworks display contribute to worsened air quality. Yeah, good slipping that in there, NPR. Number six, July 4th celebrations make busy for ERs. U.S. emergency rooms see an uptick of injuries on the 4th. Fireworks injuries are most common reasons for ER visits. If you're handling fireworks this year, keep in mind that 29% of firework injuries happens to hands and fingers. Some 10,000 people were injured by fireworks in 2022. Number seven, the U.S. is not the only country celebrating freedom on July 4th. It's also Liberation Day in Rwanda, and it's Republic Day in the Philippines. Hmm, did not know that. 
at least in the U.S., expect uh, consumers somewhere to roam of 150 million hot dogs on Independence Day this year. What? There's the, people are going to eat 150 million hot dogs? I don't know how they measured that. I don't see how accurate that is. 150 million hot dogs? Let's say there's like 300 uh, a million Americans, not counting babies. There's about 300 million Americans. So one out of every two people are eating a hot dog today? Like you guys really like hot dogs that much? It's like the worst, cheapest meat. What well, are you having hot dogs today? Because fifty percent of people apparently are, according to NPR. Uh, number eight. It's never been easier to celebrate from the comfort of your home. This is such propaganda that I'm reading. Like they're like talking about climate change, fireworks. Remember climate change, and I'm surprised they don't have, add something about race or transgender in this NPR article. <laughs> Remember on the 4th of July to use the correct pronouns. Um, live streams of this year's Independence Day celebrations will be happening across the nation. This year's A Capital 4th will stream festivities from Washington, D.C. The event will feature live performances from others, Chicago, Babyface, and Belinda Carlisle, uh, in what organizers call the greatest display of fireworks in the nation. Fuck you. <laughs> I, I, I'm not patriotic about the well, the White House administration. Ooh, they're going to have the best fireworks in the nation. I'm just picturing Joe and Jill Biden like looking up at the fireworks. Oh, wow. Ooh, ooh, fireworks. Whoa. Like, uh, hopefully, <laughs> no, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> you know, fireworks are like very loud and explosive events. So our seniors, they need to be careful so they don't have like heart attacks and stuff. So let's all pray that the president's all right. All right. There's an argument that Independence Day should be celebrated on July 2nd. Happy birthday, mom. The Continental Congress voted on Independence Day on July 2nd, 1776, but didn't approve the Declaration of Independence until July 4th, 1776. Uh, founding father John Adams argued the holiday should actually be on July 2nd. Wow, interesting. So the 4th of July uh, should actually happen on July 2nd and not on the 4th of July because the Declaration of Independence was actually signed on July 2nd, which is the exact midday of the year, the middle point of the year. And um, John Adams, uh, one of the founding fathers, you know, argued that it should be July 2nd. So keep that in mind on next year's July 2nd. And uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful 4th of July holiday. Remember, tomorrow is Wednesday, and it's just Wednesday. It's Wednesday, July 5th tomorrow. There's no holiday. So open your eyes, get back to reality. You know, you're not on a TV show. Uh, people should leave your neighbors alone. Worry about number one. If you want to look at successful people, they did not go with the group. If you want to look at unsuccessful people, look at criminals, look at mental patients. They go with the group. They're very passive. The jails and prisons and mental hospitals are full of passive individuals and people that just went with the group and didn't listen to themselves. The most successful people, CEOs, millionaires, billionaires, self-made people, they're independent-minded. They did their own thing. They didn't listen to other people. They listened to their heart. They didn't listen to the haters talking that shit behind a computer. They listened to what's inside of them. And they took what they're good at and propelled it into an arrow, to an arrowhead. And they took the arrowhead and shot it right through the fucking air. Because when you think about it, you might as well do that. And if you want to be successful, take what you're good at and market it. If you're good at speaking, if you're good at storytelling, do a podcast. If you're good at video making, if you're good at editing, make music videos. You won't get paid at first, but if you're good at it, people, you're going to have haters, but people will notice you. People will eventually see you. And if not, it's for posterity because we all have a limited time here. It's a miracle that we just exist. All of us were on this rock in the boondock corner of the Milky Way, flinging around a star going a million miles per hour. It's a miracle that this is even happening right now. Life and advanced life is extremely rare. And we're millions of miles away, billions, trillions away from any other star. 
There's so much shit going on in the galaxies, colliding with each other, supernovas blowing up, things going on, and we're just a speck out here. And that little speck that we're at, it's a it's a miracle that even happened because trillions of little sperms had them one of them had to find their way to your mother's egg and create you as an individual and all of the trillions of people that could have exist will never exist it's a miracle that you exist and it seems like it could just happen once all the sand and the entire beach on every ocean on every beach on every sand on this entire planet every single speck of sand small like a grain of salt is how many people that could have existed and didn't exist. So you're where that one speck of sand. And so you might as well uh, enjoy it and don't ruin someone else's piece of sand. Everybody have a great day. Mr. G podcast is available wherever you listen to podcasts, listen to it on your way to work at school, while you're at work, while you're at home, Apple podcasts, Spotify podcasts, everywhere you get podcasts and full episodes uploaded in their entirety on Twitter and YouTube. Thank you all. I'll see you guys later. Aloha.